You're being groomed to get used to uh, a grown man's hands, you know, on you regularly. Who would have believed me, a priest in 1948 or 47 would abuse you? To do that? Never heard of such a thing because they covered it up. I just think, like, the word God makes me think of him, and I just... <laughs> when you have the priest um, touching you every day, you know, that's a hard memory to, uh, to have. Just a few of the more than 1,000 victims cited in a devastating report this week from a Pennsylvania grand jury detailing decades of abuse by more than 300 Catholic priests Abuse known to church leaders who the grand jury said followed a, quote, playbook for concealing the truth. Bishop David Zubik is one of the church leaders discussed in the report. He joins us now from Pittsburgh. Bishop Zubik, thank you for joining us this morning. I want to give you the opportunity to respond right off the bat to those critics who say church leaders were complicit in a cover-up. Okay, first of all, George, thank you for the opportunity to be with you on air. And I want to say, first of all, we all need to have a, a deep sense of empathy for all the victims who have suffered so much. As I apologize to them, we need to continue with uh, looking for efforts to help their lives become better. Second of all, I can well understand the rage that people have in reading this report. I feel that rage as well, too. And third of all, I want to offer my support to the very faithful priests and deacons who uh, serve our people so faithfully. I, I want to say that it's important from my perspective, George, to talk about the whole uh, uh, allegation of cover-up. Um, I was a little bit surprised to hear after my first answer to the, our news conference on Tuesday that I was somehow part of the cover-up. And I realized that what we needed to do here in Pittsburgh was to be able to show the public how that wasn't so. And so what I asked to have done over the course of the, the uh, last couple of days after the report was released and uh, our own listing of offenders was to make sure that we put not only when an offense was uh, brought forth to the diocese, but in every case where, the, where it was reported to the appropriate district attorney. The second thing I realized was uh, the report is lengthy, but we were also given the opportunity by the courts to do our response. And I encourage people to read our responses as well, too, because it addresses the issue of how we didn't cover up. Uh, and but, third of all, I think it's, uh, we need to note that uh, district attorneys who have um, uh, been in Allegheny County uh, for the last 30 years have this week issued statements to say that we have, in fact, turned uh, every allegation over to them. But let's take a look at one of the specifics in the report. It's the testimony of a victim of Monsignor Raymond Schultz, who testified that he was abused or raped 10 to 15 times. And he describes a meeting with you where you offered to pay for college tuition for his children, counseling as well. But the victim says he refused the offer because the diocese followed up and said this. I want to put it up on the screen. You're going to have to meet with our lawyer and sign these documents that basically said you're done with. You can't come after us. It's over. No public. Your mouth is closed. That sounds, in, from that testimony, like an attempted cover-up. No, I think, first of all, George, th uh, that was an allegation that was brought forward after the person who was alleged to have committed the abuse was, in fact, deceased. Uh, I think that uh, we have taken a position in the Diocese of Pittsburgh since 2002 uh, not to do any confidentiality agreements, but we needed to be able to assert whether or not the uh, uh, alleged behavior did, in fact, occur. Uh, and uh, that was part of the, the discussion that took place in that particular case. The survivors of the network of those abused by priest SNAP is calling for tough action against your diocese. It says Catholics should stop donating to Bishop Zubik's diocese until he steps down or takes proven steps to protect kids. Such a boycott may be the best way to cut through the persistent denial of Pittsburgh's church hierarchy. Your response? Sure. I, I want to go back to when I became the Bishop of, Di of the Diocese of Pittsburgh in 2007. I can honestly say that we have followed every single step that we needed to follow uh, to be responsible in our response to, uh, to, uh, to the victims. First of all, uh, we've listened to them carefully. Second of all, we've re uh, removed priests from ministry. Third of all, we have, in fact, turned it over to uh, the district attorneys of the appropriate counties. Uh, fourth of all, we have engaged the Independent Review Board to 
should uh, uh, assess and take a look at the allegations and whether or not a person would be suitable for ministry again. And we have, in fact, informed uh, the, the people in our parishes about those allegations, as well as put out press releases accordingly. So I think that that uh, behavior and the steps that we've consistently taken since 2007 uh, really works and against SNAP's um, uh, calling forth my resignation. And, and, and there are many descriptions and reportive actions you and Bishop Worrell took uh, against priests who were uh, alleged to have abused uh, young victims. But you know the feeling out there is deep, that so many Catholics and others feel betrayed by the church hierarchy. What do you say to them? Uh, we have to be able to continue to look at the things that, that we have done to really correct this issue. The, the Church of Pittsburgh today is not the, the church that's described in the grand jury report. And, and if I could indicate, you know, uh, starting with, two, with 1988, when Bishop Worrell became Bishop of Pittsburgh, one of the first acts that he had to confront wa was uh, an abuse of two brothers by three priests. Uh, he was very passionate about addressing clergy sexual abuse. And what happened is that we began uh, to develop uh, very uh, stringent policies around uh, clergy sexual abuse. He was very direct with the priests in 1988 to tell them if they knew anything, they had to come forward. Uh, we established an independent review board to assist the bishop to be able to uh, assess allegations. Fourth of all, we established a diocesan assistance coordinator who's a full-time position that, that meets specifically with victims, and we both first encouraged uh, people who were victims to go forward to report their allegations, and then we followed up on that as well, too. Those were some of the things that we've done in the past to try to, to show people that we have been doing things over the course of the years, and we can't stop there. We have to look for new ways to be able to eradicate sexual abuse in the church, but to work together with all of society to eradicate it from society in general. Bishop Zubik, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.